right. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for coming out to see this. This is uh, ayahuasca cooking, a la Amazonas. This is uh, the way we do it when we have abundant materials and all the all, all the conditions perfect. So this is ayahuasca, mature ayahuasca, and it's uh, ayahuasca that was peeled last night because uh, when we peel it, what it does is it has um, a less bitter taste to it. And so it's very important to peel it, to peel the skin off from it. And so a vine like this is, is very old. We're talking about seven or eight years old. So it's an old vine. Now, we peeled the skin off of this last night. And this morning, the boys mash it up with mallets so that it's penetrated by this boiling water. And now what we do is we pack it into the, the pots and we make a sandwich of ayahuasca on the bottom and then we make a, another layer of chacruna. We build basically a hero sandwich, okay? So that the, the plants can mix by being boiled together at a very, very high heat. Now for those of you who are in the botanical garden tour yesterday, You'll remember what I said to you about bringing these two elements of feminine and masculine together. Now this is the actual work on the ground. We have to boil this for 10 hours. We have to boil it at a very high heat. And we have to make sure that it makes its connection. That it becomes one. In one brew. Because if it's separate, it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. It has to be completely meshed. It has to be a combination of feminine and masculine. And so that's what we're doing here. Put an impacarle doing a bit, por favor. Now, the ayahuasca formula is something that we've known about ever since the, uh, the Spaniards came here and they wrote accounts of this. But they wrote about it in, in the tone of the Inquisition, under the shadow of the Inquisition. And they said that this was devil worship, or this was uh, worship of demons. But the word of the Indians itself is extremely different from that. They say that what it is is basically the valve to life, to abundance, to liberty, to awareness, and to solution solving. And that has been my experience. That's precisely what it's good for. And that is what we use it for five times a week. And it's very deep, very penetrating, and it has to be used with an enormous amount of respect. It also has to be cooked and prepared with a lot of respect. It has to be prepared with a lot of spirit and with a lot of awareness. Because this ayahuasca is extremely powerful, it's definitely the mother of all medicines here. And as we talked in the Botanical Garden yesterday, it's basically the mother of all medicines. It gives permission to the other plants to come in and cure your bodies, cure your liver, your gallbladder, your kidneys, your, your uh, urinary tract, whatever's bad, whatever's off balance. It takes care of it quickly and well. But the ayahuasca is basically the, the forerunner. It's the one that opens up the passages so that uh, the other plants have complete entrance and are capable of working with the family because what we're talking about is a family of herbal medicine here and when we're, we're, we're here in the rainforest these plants are incredibly connected they depend on each other to have influence to have longevity to have vibrance and to have power and so they work together on a regular and constant basis and they depend on us as shamans to tell them which way they're going, what they're going to do, and what their mission is. Because they have a very broad spectrum of possibilities. They can do whatever they're called upon to do. And believe me, they've done it all through the ages. Now, one of the biggest uses of ayahuasca in the past, and why the monks and the conquistadors had such a difficult time with it, was that it was used as a weapon against the colonial powers. Because this was one part of the conquest that they did not understand. They did not understand the religion, they did not understand the magic. 
they did not understand the incantations or the red or the black magic. They thought it was all like Christianity. So what did they do? Well, they take down all of the temples, all of the sundials, all of the situations where sacred places are guarded in the Sierra. But when they came here, they were unable to do that. Why? Well, because these people were nomads. They, they, they weren't easy to put their finger on. So they could see these people coming. They say, well, okay, we've got these guys in the armor coming in. You know, they move really slow. So let's get the women and children out of here, move them 30 miles to the left, and send a few people back to just eliminate these guys because they move so slow they're good target price. <laughs> and so, but what happened? <coughs> the real situation that we're talking about is that, sure, they had the influence of this plant. This plant guided them, taught them, protected them, and gave them information and gave them power. But what does it do after that? Well, it continues doing the exact same thing. It rises to the occasion of the people who depend on it. Now, people can depend on it for various things. We bless this plant so that it can be used and so that it has the function of liberation, healing, produces abundance, and individuality and power in each person. But that doesn't mean that's the only thing it's capable of doing. That is why the shamanic work is so important in working with ayahuasca. Because you have to have a person who directs the vine and the chakruna in the direction indicated for the particular task we have in hand. For healing, teaching, and basically illuminating and inspiring the people. And liberating them from the things that are keeping them back in their personal lives. But in other instances, this plant has been used for other things. For instance, when I was in shamanic training, I begged with my teacher to please bring me back into the woods. I want to see real Indians. I want to see Indians who have never had contact with the white people. I want to see tribes. And finally, I convinced him, okay, I'll take you back. Well, watch out, you know, this is, this is not what you think it is. And he was right. So we drive for three days down the river. We go up a little tributary. We go up. We go up for about five or six hours. All of a sudden, we've got people in front of us with shotguns. Okay, stop. People in back with shotguns. Okay, don't go back. Stay right there. Now, park your boat and come with us. So they bring us in. They say, Chief, what do you think about these guys? They say, well, I know that guy. You know, he's part of the, he's part of the family. But I don't know about this white guy. I say, what are you guys doing here? They say, well, we are here to take ayahuasca with you. And he says, well, that's fine for you because you're a Shipibo Indian. But the white guy, tell him to go back to church because we don't want him here. It's dangerous for him. We can't be responsible for what's going to happen to him here. But my shamanic teacher says, no, he's with me, and I'll take responsibility for whatever happens. We would just like to go take ayahuasca with you. So can we do that or can't we? And he says, you guys go stay in that hut over there, and about dusk we'll go out and take ayahuasca, me, you, and three of my shamans. And so at dusk, they come by and go out into the woods, get into a little clearing, sit down, they build a fire, everybody sits around smoking tobacco, and then they pull out the tobacco and ayahuasca, and they serve it all the way around, and they serve me a full cup. And so what are you going to do? You're not going to say, oh, well, that's a little bit for much of it. No, okay, take it. And my teacher told me, he says, whatever you do, do whatever they say. Don't argue. And don't move. Stay put. Whatever happens. And so we're sitting there. The trance comes on very strong. The forest turns into a phantasmagoria of geometric forms and, and, and different creatures and so on. And the light search person and I'm sitting there. I've already done 500 ayahuasca ceremonies, so there's no beginner. And then all of a sudden everything stops and the teacher says, And 
and then there's complete silence. And about three minutes later, an enormous snake comes crawling into the center and smells each person's leg. Smells my leg. Smells the leg of the man next to me. And he rolls around him. And he puts his head on his shoulder. And they sit there for about three or four minutes together. The snake unrolls himself and goes out the other side. Everybody starts smoking again. We sit there for about another 45 minutes, and then they say, okay, that's it, let's go. And everybody stands up and walks back down the same path, single file, without talking. Now, I get back to the, to the village, and nobody says a thing about the snake, but I say to my teacher, what did happen back there? He said, well, these people are boa shamans, they're also jaguar shamans. They live in the jungle. They have allies in the woods. And they use these allies to take care of things that they don't want to take care of themselves. Now, that snake came in to test you and to see if you were going to jump up and run. Because if you did, it would have been the last thing you've ever done in this life. And it would have been an accident. So nobody would have been responsible for it. But since you didn't jump up and run, you passed the test. And now we can go back home. So let's give these people their gifts, tell them thank you very much for your hospitality, and we really appreciate having met you and spent some quality time with you. <laughs> and so that's life in the fast lane when you get into shamanic healing work in the backwoods. So what happens? What we're talking about is this is ayahuasca that is blessed for liberation, healing, and empowerment. The other is ayahuasca that's blessed for political purposes, for balancing out old accounts, for taking care of enemies, for illuminating you to where the problem is and to taking it out. So the ayahuasca follows the lead of the shaman. And believe me, those shamans were very powerful people. And there was no way you were going to talk to them and tell them, oh, well, this is not a po proper use of ayahuasca. <laughs> I'm sorry, church boy, but we know over many generations what we use our medicine for. And I think you can get the hang of it soon enough. You use the medicine if you can convince it to help you. We will use the medicine because it's our ally and it's our neighbor and it's lived with us for many, many, many thousands of years. And we know about it. And we're, we're the main man. We have a connection with it. It's one with us. And so that's just a, one thing to keep in mind is that power plants, including peyote, San Pedro, Toe, which is Datura, psilocybin mushrooms, they have an incredibly broad spectrum of possibilities. And it depends on the practitioner. It doesn't depend on the person who takes it. It depends on the person who blesses it before time and the person who directs it in the right direction. And that is why, because our ayahuasca is probably the best you'll find, and the combination is very strong. We have a lot of chacruna in here, and the reason we have that is because about 10 years ago, we got bored, and we said, why are the ceremonies so boring? Said, well, because the colors aren't good. We don't have enough power in this. We need more DMT. Okay, triple the amount of, of chakuna. And so we did that, and we stuck with that formula. And from then on, the ceremonies have been much more intense and much more exciting. And I'm sure that you can confess that that's the truth, right? It was really quite uh, intense the other night. And it's going to be intense again tonight, so I'm looking forward to doing another journey with you. But one thing that we're going to do before we put this on to cook... Now this is going to go on to cook for about 12 hours and we're going to boil it at a very high heat and the chakrun and the ayahuasca are going to blend together until they're one material, until they're, they're one entity. And that's what we're going to be taking possibly tomorrow night. Now separately they're not going to be of much use because we have the enzyme inhibitor and we have the DMT. But Unless they become one, they're not going to be useful to us. They're not going to be able to penetrate the body. And they're not going to do their creative work. So the last part of this, since
since I'm the I'm the person who serves this ayahuasca and I'm the one who's responsible for what it does, what I have to do is I say a prayer and I let it know what it's here for and what our intention is and what it's going to do when we drink it. And then I will reconnect with it just before I serve it by blowing and blessing and praying over the bottle and then over each glass. It's extremely important. So, does anybody have a cigarette, by the way? Uh, I used to carry a cigarette. Yeah, uh, that won't do. I'm going to need a real uh, uh, <laughs> mapacho. The hell mapacho. <laughs> What? Oh, you got a mapacho? That's just how I carry him. Okay. All right. No, well, that's a nice way to carry him. Keep him, <laughs> keep him fresh. So the idea of, of uh, blowing tobacco smoke is that we're putting a prayer and a blessing. Tobacco has always been a very powerful and important prayer that... American Indians, both north and south, have always used for any serious and important occasion. So, if they're meeting together and they're trying to make a decision, they will always prelude the, the, the discussion with tobacco. Because tobacco is a prayer, it's a telephone for calling the spirit world. And so now I'm gonna give a message to the spirit world and to the plant, saying what we're gonna use it for. Now, Walter, he's our time-tested cooker, and he's been cooking ayahuasca for us for many years, for about eight years. So he's going to be riding herd on this and making sure that the water is always all the way up to the top and boiling very strong so that it assimilates all the power of the plants and puts them into the liquid. Then we're going to empty this out about 8 o'clock at night. And uh, we're going to come up with a pot of pure tea. And then we're going to reduce it to this level. And we will filter it and then put it in bottles. And we'll store it in our wine cellar. And we'll have it ready for use at any given time. And so that's going to be the process. And you're welcome to come and take a look at it at any point along the way. And uh, you'll see that Walter pays a lot of attention to the heat of the fire, which is very important and to the level of the water, and to every detail around. And so this is ayahuasca preparation in the best of circumstances. This is where we have plenty of material, the perfect environment, and where it's perfectly legal, and where it's uh, prepared with a lot of spirit, and with a lot of respect, and a lot of attention, so that it comes out first class. And that's why we always know, oh, I always know, how much to serve you. I'd start with a cup like this, and I can serve pretty much everybody in that one shot glass. Now, I've been to other places where they have to drink, you know, goblets and so on. No, it's better to drink a small amount. And that is where, but the, the only delicate part of it is that if you add maybe just a little bit on, it changes the journey enormously because we make very strong trips. And that's what happened to you last night. That was nice, it was good to see you. So anyhow, thank you for coming and watching this. Enjoy your evening, we're gonna take a sauna. And, uh, no we're not gonna take a sauna. We already took a sauna. 
So tonight we're going to do another ceremony, so I look forward to seeing all you at 7.30. And I think the vast majority of you, from the serious look on your face, you're going to want a higher dosage tonight. So we'll, we'll be able to dial it up. And I'm glad that you guys had the chance to see this and to see the Botanical Garden in the short time you're here with us. And thank you so much for coming. And for those of you who are here uh, long range, especially you, why don't you come by my house if you get a chance, okay? Uh, I'm really glad that you're all here with me today, and thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you tonight at 7.30. We'll do another ayahuasca ceremony, and it's going to be very strong tonight.